Art is a form of expression. We encounter it whether we know it or not on a daily basis through reading, hearing, or seeing. Artists have been pushing boundaries for centuries now, trying to find new, unique ways to do things. Edgar Allan Poe, a famous American author, wrote morbid stories and is considered the father of modern mystery. Pablo Picasso, a Spanish visual artist, experimented with abstract art at the turn of the 20th century. And of course, the Beatles, an English rock band from the 60s, who pretty much paved the way for music as we know it today. All three of these examples, along with many others, had major influences on our modern world. Many of them started off as being misunderstood, but as time went on, they became more mainstream, having major influences on life today. But are there any artists today that are doing something different? Something that could potentially catch on in the future? Tim Burton, an American film director, producer, writer, and artist, has been a part of many movies we're all familiar with. He's known for his dark, eerie atmospheres in his films and was heavily influenced by Edgar Allan Poe. Danny Perez, a visual artist who has collaborated with Animal Collective multiple times, is known for his trippy filming style and costume design. Interested in abstract art, he has been influenced by Picasso. And finally, Animal Collective, an American band known for their unpredictability in psychedelic music, which has been influenced by bands like The Beatles and The Grateful Dead. So we can see that there are still people who are pushing the boundaries of art, trying out new things that haven't been done, or at least not done successfully. But how have these artists been influenced, or how have they influenced pop culture? For the sake of time, we'll focus in on Animal Collective. Music has been a huge, defining part of culture for thousands of years. It's a universal language that reaches all people from all backgrounds. Types of music can range from African tribal music to Spanish festive music, from drunken chants to bluegrass, and from classical music to today's pop music. There's music for every person with any taste. Music has the power to start movements and to get you to see things from other perspectives opening your mind. It even has the power to change your mood for better or for worse. Many of us have even formed friendships or drawn closer to other people through music. But today's music seems to be like a skipping record, repeating itself. This has caused much of the joy and emotion to be drained out of the making and listening to music. Instead of an artist spending months, or years even, to write, record, and produce a record and make something that they're genuinely proud and excited about, they can have other people write and produce music for them, while they put up some facade that draws more attention from the average person. People stop caring so long as they get money and fame. But has this always been the main concern for musicians? Or are there still people who are trying to make honest-hearted music? The answer to that question is yes. Animal Collective has been around for about 10 years, putting out an upcoming nine albums full of music made for their own enjoyment, not money and fame. But before looking into their influence in pop culture, we should get an idea of where this band is coming from, their influences, and most importantly, their music. Coming from Baltimore, Maryland, Animal Collective consisting of members Avi Ter, Pandavera, Geologist, and Deacon are now based in New York City and Lisbon. They grew up making music from an early age, constantly writing their own songs and sending them to each other, but were cut off from a lot of popular music, so for the most part, they made music from the local bands that they did know and whatever they thought sounded good. One band that had a major influence on them, though, was The Grateful Dead. They've said in interviews before that the Grateful Dead and Pavement influenced them to start using a lot of improvisation in their set and having flowing concerts where the music never stops once it starts. The band has never limited themselves for inspiration, being inspired by West African music to church gospel you can find a multitude of sounds in their songs. Starting from humble beginnings, A.V. Terran Panda Bear wrote their first two records, Spirit They're Gone, Spirit They Vanished, and Dance Manatee, around the time they were in high school. 
Both of these albums were made in Avito's apartment using guitars, drums, pianos, toy pianos, and common household objects to make the music. Despite their best efforts though, neither of these albums went anywhere until later years. Pandavir said when asked about the record that everything since then has been a variation of what we explored that summer. Dave and I already made the Spirit They're Gone record, but during that summer, we really cracked the egg open. It seemed like we could go anywhere we wanted to after that. In 2003, they released, this time including Geologist, the album Campfire Songs. Recorded outside on the back porch, the entire thing was played live through five complete songs never stopping. Released later that year was Here Comes the Indian, an album that was a turning point for the band in the way that their music sounded. Using more textures than anything else is still a trademark of the band to this day. Many ambient musicians look up to Animal Collective and their use of noises, but despite this great success in the experimental world, they were still unheard by most people. Their next three albums would be a huge breakthrough for not only them, but also many of their contemporaries. Sun Tongues, Fields, and Strawberry Jam were the next three albums to come out, all released between 2004 and 2007. Sung Tongues, a freak folk album, was critically acclaimed. Pitchfork called it the second best album of 2004 and the 27th best album of the 2000s. Using a lot of harmonizing, and for the first time, singing seemed to be a huge factor in the music. Fields followed this form, but used heavily distorted guitars with unique tuning, and overall, the album is much more laid back than the recent albums. Then there's Strawberry Jam, which Pitchfork called the sixth best album of 2007 beaten only by five other albums, one of which was Panda Bear's solo album, Chris and Pitch, which got first. This album is considered their most significant in terms of evolution. A.V. Tear said, Music should be more than just something to stomp to. It should be more interactive. For us, it's not always about just writing a good song. We want to play with your ears in terms of colors and space with sound. And finally, Meriwether Post Pavilion, the band's latest album, which has been their most successful. It reached number two in the top independent albums, using more pop elements in their songs by relying more on bass and rhythm, but still keeping to what they do best, using textures, they managed to make a very accessible album to many people who have never heard them before. Animal Collective, despite being fairly unknown still, has had a major influence on a variety of bands such as Fortet and The Black Dice. Still working their way into more mainstream music, They've shown many people the power of loops and samples. Pandavir's solo album, Person Pitch, was incredibly influential, inspiring bands like MGMT, Washed Out, Neon Indian, and many more. Animal Collective has not been sucked into fame, despite having very successful releases. On top of this, they've never let their desire for fame and money change the way they make music, and by doing this, they've kept a level head and remained down to earth.